uh, uh, Luca Gatti. Uh, thank you, Daryl, and um, thank you to the chair. I, buongiorno, just to prove that there is a cultural mongrel amongst you. I think that is what I was trying to say. Um, my brief, and I suppose my challenge with you this morning, is to introduce strategy and introduce it in terms that would be of utility to practitioners, practitioners of design. Uh, I'll try and do that by literally going through three, the three stations of the uh, process of strategic innovation, which is principally my objective when I practice. Um, firstly, the way in which if you adopt a systems perspective of the problem of strategy, uh, there is an identity at play, and that identity needs to cohere uh, with the context in which it is playing. Uh, to the second stage, which is more precisely the stage of decision making and of governance of strategy, which is, and what happens or what needs to happen to that identity if conditions change, which, as I'm sure you're all aware, is indeed what is happening uh, increasingly out there. And on account of that, having been able to identify, articulate, represent back to an organizational identity those possibilities how a change can in fact be affected in an organization such that you produce the end result, which is that of a strategic innovation. So let me usher in strategy. And if you have any interest in the subject of strategy, one of the first things that you need to recognize is it means a little bit of everything out there. Certainly when you look at the schools of thought around strategy, you'll recognize as there's different strands, sometimes hard to bring them uh, together and say, so what is it really about? And that, of course, is what I have tried to do in, in my own practice, try and uh, look at the confused and multiple versions of strategy that are out there and ask myself, so what is it about? And if we can make that abstraction, for that's the only way in which we can resolve complexity, can that then be used within organizations to affect decisions and ultimately actions that follow from those decisions? Now, to do so, we first need to, the, the landscape of complexity that you're observing, we probably need to order it a little bit and at least identify some dynamics in that space. What's going on there when we say strategy or when we think we practice strategy? And I would say the very first thing that we need to recognize is there is an agent at play. Someone has that concern. Something has that concern. There is a will to be in play, in context. Now, as always, there is a start somewhere. Don't ask me what got that agent there. That's, <laughs> that's more of a uh, a, a different order of problems. But that agent is at play, and it has usually, if it has a will to be, an intent to maximize its own purpose. And frankly, that can be resolved into two terms. One is to be there in time, so long as time is, a, is available to that agent, and to do so competitively, so that it is better off than other agents at play. On account of that, therefore, that agent will seek a systemic interpretive framework for understanding literally where is it, where does it stand with respect to the context within which it is at play. And that is literally an interpretive effort. By the way, if you look at the word strategy and you ask yourself etymologically, what does it stand for? Well, there's two uh, semantic values that combine in it. It's a compound. Stratos, which is everything that is out there. Literally, it means that. That which is out there. And again, which at one level means to move in. So yes, you could say it's about moving into that which is out there. But more appropriately, politically, in fact, it's interpreting, making sense of that which is out there. 
It does that with respect to a context which has some very peculiar qualities to it. It is changing fast. It is uncertain. Literally, it does not support robust decision-making on account of those uh, qualities. And frankly, it is unknown. And that, of course, is a very big interpretive challenge. How do you make sense of that? Because what you want to do is, on account of whatever has changed in that context, you literally want to re-establish a degree of coherence with whatever has changed around you. And that, of course, is you want to create a future self, which again has the quality of being coherent with the context in which it is playing. Now, I hope this is beginning to strike you as simple and self-evident. Of course, it isn't, for ultimately in that is a colossal problem of sense-making. But when you look at it, you could really say, well, it all boils down to that principle of being coherent with. So if we take that, we say, well, strategy ultimately is about recognizing the relational item, uh, elements that are at play, the two things that relate to each other, and of course then the goal of strategy is the quality of that relationship. And that gives us purchase on a problem at least. A problem that we can now re-articulate. Now that has been a very violent abstraction, I'm sure you'll recognize. So we need to bring some new meaning into that and say, well, that relationship that we are the custodians of, if you happen to be a strategic leader, is really about two terms. That which is an identity and that within which that identity happens to be which is its context. Now, this is, I hope, even to you, extraordinarily simple to observe, extraordinarily difficult to produce, for ultimately, before you can even start the game of strategy, you need to make those two terms available to yourself in such a way that you can produce that effect. Bearing in mind that your principal goal is actually the quality of that. So, interestingly, and this is part of why I'm, I'm here talking to designers, that quali the quality of that relationship is the object of design and strategic leadership. Now, this, in, at least in my practice, is not a common perception. Generally speaking, most strategic leadership is obsessed with identity, and unfortunately, in a very superficial way, usually in a descriptive way. They'll tell you everything about the products, the services, the markets, the number of employees, and obviously all of the financials. That's a very base and insufficient way of understanding identities at play. So-called inspired leaders tend to look out and therefore might be assumed uh, to you know, have, have some uh, relevance with respect to the context are insightful about it, but really, that is the object of strategic leadership, the quality of that. Now, when it comes to making those two terms available to the strategic leader, we have to recognize that identity, far from being descriptive, and far from being a teleolog teleological view of identity as purpose and finality, aspirational sense of identity, which is not just frankly to me at least, rather glib, but really scary when it comes to the quality of decision making that's predicated on that view of the self, you really have to understand identity as being an emergent property of something that has come to be on account of stuff which is at play. As far as the context, well, that presents us an extraordinary problem because really the only tense that matters in strategy is the future. And I think one of the things that strategic leadership needs to mature into is understanding that the future ontologically does not exist, it beams no information back, and it is significantly less traceable based on whatever has happened to us in the past. 
So, can the problem be resolved? Yes, and I would say, generally speaking, with an intellectual effort, which abstracts the problem and makes it available to those who have to take decisions. Firstly, I would say, your starting point is identity. And how do you, for at least a firm, a business firm, constitute a representation of identity which is useful to strategic decision making? Well, I would say, rather simply, by recognizing, firstly, that you exist on account of something which is out there. It is that social experience, the need for something, that makes something else occur. On account of the fact that that exists, and in my experience, most organizations don't know how to say what that is. They literally don't know how to bring it out to themselves and therefore make it an object of self-reflection. Then the firm brings its own resources and the capabilities with which it transforms those and engages the need. Far down the line in strategic thinking should be the quality of products and services with which that engagement actually happens. Here is where the problem resides. What do you know and what are you doing that makes you engage that need in a satisfactory way? And by the way, that exchange doesn't happen just because you want it but only on account of the fact that in the context there are some conditions that allow and enable that exchange to occur. As to our second item, which is context, and we need those before we can even start playing strategy, well, here is the future. It is not there. And, you know, this is actually a rather generous representation of the future because it's already beginning to say, there is some matter, and if I frame it, I might bring some significance to it. And yes, of course, that is what human systems do very, very well. They bring narrative significance to this uncertainty, and they say something about the future. And in my experience, the more aware they are of the fact that the only way of filling the void is by telling a good story of it, the more robust their decisions actually happen to be. One of the problems when it comes to the future is that, you know, I, I guess there will be people here that are familiar with trends and big trends. Generally speaking, I'm skeptical. There's one big trend out there that I would recommend everybody to reflect on, which is the risk society, it, we're leaving it behind us. Probability is collapsing as a tool with which to make effective decisions, literally collapsing, and something else is beginning to come up to us, which is the quality of changes. So, assuming that you've resolved those two terms for yourself, and you say, I've got a systems view of who I am, and I've got some good, robust narratives about the future, of which I recognize that they're not truthful, but they might be relevant to me, I can begin to play. And usually what I'll recognize, on account of that, is that Context will change in multiple ways and in ways that are likely to be surprising. I need to establish relevance to that. To do so, what I and my team have introduced is the concept of strategic risk. Now, strategic risk has been around for a while. It's particularly powerful because it makes boards jolt. You give them a strategic risk and suddenly they actually listen to you and they'll take decisions on account of that because they think that that's their job and they're right. We certainly don't have time here to see what the strategic risk is. I would say, think of it as an incoherence. If you happen to be coherent at some point in your sense of identity, a change in context will induce an incoherence in the quality of that relationship. Identify it, articulate it, and make it available to a governance system. What is interesting about that is that that governance system will suddenly find itself having to take decisions about something which it has called a framed uncertainty. It is relevant, but I don't know what it is really about. Now, I'll give you a definition of strategic risk. It's not a very operational one, but just to give us a sense that it's changes in the context from which mostly strategic risks it's, uh, emerge. When I say mostly, it is because, of course, sometimes you change identity. And that, of course, colors the quality of the relationship. 
but it's not as relevant to strategic decision making as changes in context, structural changes in the nature and dynamics of context. Ultimately, what this does is that it brings that and that to the fore in very clear terms to key decision makers, resolving one of the paradoxes of strategic decision making. The higher up you go into governance systems, the more there tends to be a sense of risk averseness and the less is there a willingness to actually engage in the entrepreneurial intent of the business. This squarely puts it in front of the decision makers. Both of those two terms are your principal concern. Just to remind us all, ultimately, that risk, strategic risk, is an incoherence in the relationship between, the quality, between a, an identity and the nature of its context. So, if that is the problem, the concern of strategic leadership, are there ways in which that problem, which is a big one, and I would never wish to hide that from anybody, it is complex, can it be effectively addressed? And I guess we're moving into that space, and can design bring something to that? Well, firstly, you actually need to bring the problem to the key decision makers such that they can handle it. And when I say that, I really mean it. Uh, this is uh, an interactive, I, you know, you'll only see the slides of it, not the interaction, but it's something that exists only in iPad form and for board directors to literally bring with them to the decision-making moment, such that they have the problem articulated and presented to them. Just to give you a sense of what landscape are they covering when they're taking decisions of that order? Well, that is your strategic risk, a big uncertainty, but it's a meaningful one. Your concern as decision maker is resolve the uncertainty. No decision can validly be predicated on uncertainty. Resolve uncertainty such that the organization finds itself in a position where it can take a decision. As it does so, very interestingly, especially for designers, the concern goes from resilience, qualitative judgment, strategic conversations, to placing options to help me resolve that problem and gradually using those options to learn about the evolution of the context and acquire intelligence, information, resources, models framed in such a way that I can now determine that that will be my next strategic commitment. Bear in mind that when you say strategic commitment, it is one of the most risky decisions that you can possibly take. The whole organization will engage in doing one thing. And I'm sure at this point you should realize just how risky that is. In fact, every time that an organization determines to be something, that is when strategic leadership needs to ask itself, and what's the risk of that? So you cycle back. Again, we are still in our iPad uh, experience here where the key decision maker is basically dealing with this problem. Here you'll hopefully recognize the relationship at play. We are this, and we need to say this to ourselves in, 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 in effective and visual ways. These are the changes that matter to us, so not simply future events. To say climate change will happen is strategically insignificant, absolutely insignificant. It acquires meaning on account of its relational property with something out there for whom that event actually happens to be a risk. So that needs to be expressed to the key decision makers. At which point you'll have, if you've got a good organization supporting you, a number of such things, a number of possible incoherences occurring to you. In this case, oops, sorry, we've uh, listed uh, seven. And what you understand is it's something about that which, with respect to this, gives me that articulation of risk. That gives me an object to, with which to express a qualitative judgment. What do I, as key decision maker, feel and think about this framed uncertainty? That decision, which might, might appear to you as relatively simple to exercise, is one that usually means, well, you're going to have to put options around that, because you don't know what to do. And those options, generally speaking, have within it 
a nugget of strategic innovation. You have to think about how you're going to be different under those conditions. And you have to do that with respect to each of those problems. But with what effort, that is subject to your qualitative judgment. What do you, as a strategic leader, think of the nature of the incoherence that you are addressing? What is particularly convenient from the point of view of designers about this way of representing the problem of strategic decision maker is that if I have risks and I recognize that they emerge from structural changes that I have brought to myself, well, then I need to manage that. And the only way in which I can manage it is by putting options around each of those structural changes, positions from which I can say to myself, so what is the nature and dynamic of that change, and what will I do as this assumes some informational value? What resources, what models will I bring to myself such that I will change the nature of my strategic identity? And here you can see, and this is exactly how a board director would experience it, oh, we've got those risks, it's on account of information symmetry, and we've got two or three options play, playing out for us out there over time, bringing resources, intelligence, and capabilities. So, what is an option? Because at this point, clearly having options becomes a strategic asset for the key decision makers. I want that. And you literally hear them say back to you, I need options. And of course, you need to give them options. You need to design those options. Those definitely are objects of design. So an option is a position. And by the way, the important thing is it's literally that. It places yourself somewhere here now from which to observe that which may be happening at a later stage. That we are in, so you have to have it. You have to give it to yourself. You have to invest in it. With respect to an action, it's the possibility of an action that you might take in the future that you can execute at an opportune moment in time. The separation between options and opportunity is something that most decision makers find very difficult to produce, and it's actually essential to good decision making. Opportunity is something that you leverage with your current business model. Go for it, and go, it in, go for it in a big way if it's really an opportunity. An option is an explorative, uh, item that you've put out there to see how things will happen and what you might be considering doing in a future differently. This is just to reveal to you that, you know, once you've made a key decision maker want options, well, they're asking for a very complex thing that demands high level, high quality of design, and we shall see exactly uh, uh, to what degree that is um, the case. So what I'm sharing here with you is literally on account of that mandate that is coming back to you from board and, and, and senior executives, we need options with which to understand what will be the future of us. That is doing, literally. Now, what are the essential qualities of that? Firstly, the capacity to produce a strategic argument. An option is not a good idea. It's not something that you like. It's not even something that you think in general terms is a good thing to do. It's something that connects to that relationship that you have just explored and the incoherence of which is your problem. So that capacity to connect with that strategic argument is an essential quality in the design of strategic options. In designing strategic options, you're making radical, important choices. And it's you, the designer, that is making those choices. You cannot go back every time. I mean, you know, these are teams of uh, seven, nine people churning out options. It, the whole process, as we've designed, it takes about 20 working days to have to, to get to that point. Um, you're churning them out. You're taking decisions. Where are we going to put an option around virtual reality or interface between artificial and biological intelligences. That is a choice expressed by the designer in the process of making strategic options. And once you've done that, then you have to articulate your creative principles and do that thing. Literally make it available to yourself. Have that experience. 
because it is on, that, on account of that experience which you have designed. So literally, this is the design of an experiential value on account of which you are learning and drawing resources out of context. You result in what is a very simple uh, resolution of your problem, which is if you have an option, you'll have an experience over time, the principal value of which is learning. On account of that experience, which is a of a strategic order, of course, you are learning what will you need to change into. And, of course, that is the value of having options. Now, just how powerful can that process be? Well, I'll just share with you my experience. Until recently, about 10 years ago, to convince a board to invest in a portfolio of strategic options was really difficult. And at best, they'd tell you, okay, give, you know, what option? You know, what option do we have? Or, you know, if they got down to two or three, they were sweating. With this argument so embedded in the quality of their decision making, they fret if they don't have 30 options out there because they recognize that is the matter with which I will make my future self. Now, to end, I thought I'd, uh, to a certain extent, go back to the beginning slide, but this time articulated in a way that designers might feel more familiarity uh, with, which is, firstly, you know, strategy really is about recognizing contingency. So, please, designers, leave vision, leave mission out, leave objectives out. They're dangerous. From a strategic perspective, they're really dangerous. So, don't do it. But be designers, recognize contingency, recognize the extent to which it's being at play that makes things, and it's within that that you need to find your own space, your own identity. So be reflective, induce reflection in those systems. Leverage irony, that is really what good strategic facilitation uh, needs to do. Design participative systems. Strategy is about systems determining what they need to do. So, do so, and above all, bring to strategy that which is definitely missing currently in strategy, which is the capacity to iterate your processes, to prototype quickly, to learn fast, and to leverage that learning in order to change your own principles and ultimately the things that you're going to do. That is, is serving the learning experience of having options out there, and it's on account of that that you can bring change to the things that you're designing for. And that's me. <laughs>